Rules of the Road. This chapter highlights key traffic laws and safe driving principles related to those laws. A more complete discussion of driving techniques is found in Section C of this manual, Safety Tips for Safe Driving and Sharing the Road. Even on a short trip, you may be faced with many dangerous driving conditions. Statistics show that half of all vehicle crashes occur within 25 miles of home. The rules of the road are those laws, regulations, and practices that provide safe vehicle movement on the roadways, signaling, turning, passing, and stopping. Learn the traffic rules and follow them. Be willing to yield to other drivers to avoid a crash. Always watch carefully for advance warning and information signs. Be a courteous driver. Always obey instructions of traffic officers. Some basic rules are driving on the right side of the road. In the United States, Canada, and most other countries, right-hand traffic is the rule. This means we drive on the right side of the road and turn right when going around traffic circles, roundabouts, or town squares. Obeying officers. You must obey traffic officers at all times. There will be times when an officer will instruct you to do something that ordinarily would be a violation of traffic regulations. The officer will do this only in case of an emergency when it is in the only way to keep traffic flowing smoothly and safely. A common example, a police officer holding up traffic at a green light and permitting a funeral procession to continue through a red light. Coasting prohibited. While traveling on a downgrade, never coast with the transmission of the vehicle in neutral. Also, drivers of manual transmission vehicles must not coast with the clutch depressed. Driving in neutral and or with the clutch depressed reduces the driver's control of the car. Use of headlights. Required night use. Your car headlights must be turned on 30 minutes after sunset until 30 minutes before sunrise. Required daylight inclement weather use. Also, your car headlights must be turned on, one, at any time when daylight is not good enough for you to see persons or vehicles clearly at a distance of 200 feet ahead, and two, when rain, mist, snow, or other precipitation require constant use of windshield wipers. Headlights turned on during the daylight hours will make your vehicle easier to see to oncoming vehicles and pedestrians. Use headlights when driving at dusk. Even if you can see clearly, headlights help other drivers see you as much as they help you see them. Get into the habit of turning headlights on when using windshield wipers. Remember, using headlights when wipers are, are in use is not just a good safety precaution, it's Tennessee law. Dimming of headlights required. When your vehicle's high beam headlights are on, you must dim or lower the beam when an oncoming vehicle is within 500 feet, approximately the distance of one city block, or when you are following another vehicle within 500 feet. Dimming headlights when following other vehicles is an important safety step. The glare from your headlights in a rear view mirror can blind another driver, including a motorcyclist. Limited use of parking lights or auxiliary fog lights. The following procedures should be followed when using these types of lights. 1. The law requires a vehicle stopped or parked on a road or shoulder to have parking lights on when limited visibility conditions exist. 2. Do not drive a vehicle with only the parking lights on when driving at night or in inclement weather. The small size of parking lights may cause other drivers to think your vehicle is further away than it actually is. When there is limited visibility, the use of parking lights alone is not only unsafe, it is against the law. 3. It is also illegal to have auxiliary lights or fog lights on by themselves or on at times when you are required to dim high beam headlights. These very bright lights make it difficult for oncoming drivers to see and the glare may reflect blindingly in the rear view mirror of vehicles you are following. Daytime running lights. Some newer vehicles have headlights that are on any time the vehicle is running. These lights make it easier for others to see the vehicle even in daylight. This reduces the likelihood of collisions. Effective January 1, 2018, no vehicle operated in Tennessee shall be equipped with any steady burning lights that display to the front of the vehicle in any color other than white or amber or in any combination of colors other than white and amber. There are exceptions for certain vehicles. Also effective January 1st, 2018, 
No vehicle operated in Tennessee shall be equipped with any flashing lights in any color or combination of colors that display to the front of the vehicle other than factory installed emergency flashers. There are exceptions for certain vehicles. Littering. Litter is an unsightly problem across the state of Tennessee, creating an eyesore for our scenic roads and highways. Throwing cigarette butts, food, snack, tobacco products, papers, cans, bottles, or disposing of other material from vehicles are all forms of littering. Littering not only harms the environment we enjoy here in Tennessee, but also poses a potential traffic hazard and risk to you and your family. Tennessee law requires any motor vehicle transporting litter or any material likely to fall or be blown off onto the highway to be in an enclosed space or fully covered by a tarpaulin. Prevention of littering is a major saving of your tax dollar. Costly cleanup of litter is required before our roadways can receive certain maintenance services such as roadside grass mowing. Littering is against state law. Fines start at $50 and can be up to $500 based upon the amount of litter. A person convicted of littering is required to spend up to 40 hours of public service removing litter and at the discretion of the court, spend up to eight additional hours of working in a waste recycling center. Littering can be very costly. Let's keep Tennessee clean. Don't litter. Slow moving vehicles. It is against the law to drive slower than the posted minimum speed under normal driving conditions. You may drive more slowly than the minimum speed if you are driving in bad weather, heavy traffic, or on a bad road. If there is no posted minimum speed, it is still against the law to drive so slowly that you block traffic. Note, you are considered to be driving a slow moving vehicle if you are traveling at a rate of speed that is 10 miles per hour or more below the lawful maximum speed. If five or more vehicles are lined up behind you, turn or pull off the roadway as soon as you can do so safely. Slow drivers who block other traffic cause many accidents. Remember, slower is not always safer. Funeral procession. In Tennessee, it is common and accepted practice for oncoming traffic to pull to the side of the roadway as a sign of respect when meeting a funeral procession. Tennessee law instructs the following. Vehicles following a funeral procession on a two-lane roadway may not attempt to pass such procession and no operator of a vehicle shall drive between vehicles in a properly identified funeral procession except when directed to do so by a traffic officer. The basic speed rule. The speed at which you drive determines how much time you have to act or react and how long it takes to stop. The higher the speed, the less time drivers have to spot hazards. Judge the speed of other v traffic and react to avoid the mistakes of other drivers. The basic speed rule, BSR, is not a Tennessee law, but it is a general safety practice. The BSR does not set an exact speed limit. Instead, it teaches that the speed you may drive is limited by current conditions. For example, if the posted speed limit is 65 miles per hour and you are driving at night on a two-lane state highway and it's raining or foggy, 65 miles per hour is too fast for those conditions. To obey the BSR, think about your speed in relation to other traffic, including pedestrians, bicycles, and motorcycles, the surface and width of the road, hazards at the intersections, weather, visibility, and any other condition that could affect safety. Principles of the basic speed rule. Your speed must be careful and prudent. Use skill and good judgment. Two. Your speed must be reasonable and proper, not too fast and not too slow, for any conditions including amount of traffic, how many cars on the road, speed of traffic, how fast or slow it's moving, whether pedestrians are present, especially children in school zones or neighborhoods, surface of the road, rough or smooth, paved, gravel, etc. Width of the road, one lane, two lane, four lane, structure of the road, straight, curving, bridges, narrow shoulders, etc. Visibility, how far ahead you can see clearly. Weather conditions, rain, snow, ice, fog, etc. Your own driving ability. Three, do not drive so slowly that you block, hinder, or interfere with other vehicles moving at normal speeds. Four, your speed must be adjusted to conditions so you can stop within a clear distance ahead. 
If you drive at a speed that is unsafe for existing conditions in any area, you are violating the basic rule. This applies even if you are driving slower than the posted speed or maximum limit. Example, you are driving in line of downtown traffic and the car ahead of you stops suddenly. If you cannot stop in time to avoid hitting that car from behind, you are either breaking the BSR, even if you were driving within the posted speed limit, or you are following too closely. Tennessee Speed Laws Speed is a major contributing factor that causes fatal accidents in Tennessee. Unless otherwise posted, the speed limit on primary and secondary state and federal highways is 55 miles per hour. When driving, adjust your speed to flow along with the speed at which other traffic is moving, provided the other traffic is traveling within the posted speed limit. Slow drivers are as likely to become involved in accidents as speeders. If most vehicles are traveling between 50 and 55 miles per hour, you are least likely to have an accident if you stay within that speed range. Interstate speed limits. The maximum speed set by Tennessee law for interstate highways is 70 miles per hour. This speed does not apply to all sections of the interstate highway system. It may be set as low as 55 miles per hour in some larger urban areas where there is more traffic congestion. The maximum limit should be driven only in the ideal driving conditions. You must reduce your speed when conditions require it. Example, reduce speed for 1. Curves 2. When the roadway is slippery during rain, snow, icy conditions or 3. When it is foggy and difficult to see clearly. Rural interstate limits 70 miles per hour is the speed posted on most of the rural sections of Tennessee interstate highways urban interstate limits. In the more congested urban or metropolitan areas of Tennessee interstates, the limit is typically 55 miles per hour. Note, it is unlawful for any person to drive a vehicle less than 55 miles per hour in the left lane most leftmost lane of any interstate highway unless traffic congestion and flow prevent safe driving at such speed. On the interstates, the minimum speed limit in the right lane is 45 miles per hour and under normal driving conditions all vehicles must travel at least this fast so they are not a hazard to other drivers. If the minimum posted speed limit is too fast for you, use another road. Watch for speed limit changes. The state, counties, and municipalities each have the authority to set speed limits for the roadways, highways under their control. Therefore, you could see some sections of interstate with some city limits set at 60 or 65 miles per hour. On the secondary streets and highways, these limits will change according to certain zones. Some residential roads or city streets may have limits as low as 25 or 35 miles per hour at all times. Watch carefully and obey speed limit signs in business, residential, and school zones. Speeding in school zones. Speed limits in all school zones are regulated when children are going to or from the school or during a school recess hour. Exceeding the school zone speed limit is by law considered to be reckless driving. The penalty includes an automatic six points added to your driving record, which automatically results in an advisory letter being sent to you. Speeding in highway work zones. Highway work zones and those portions of a street or highway where construction, maintenance, or utility work is being done to the road, its shoulders, or any other items related to the roadway. This includes work such as underground and overhead utility work, tree trimming, and survey, survey activities. Highway work zones are easily recognized by the presence of orange or yellow-green signs and other orange traffic control devices flashing lights on equipment, and workers dressed in highly visible clothing, orange or yellow-green. Highway workers are trained on how to set up safety zones with directional traffic signs and devices. Motorists and pedestrians are responsible for knowing how to read and react to these directions. Paying attention and driving cautiously and courteously are the most important steps to preventing crashes while driving through highway work zones. Tennessee law mandates a minimum fine of $250 and up to a maximum fine of $500 for violations of the speed limit posted in active work zones. Work zone crashes are preventable. Drivers must obey the reduced speed limit as well as pay close attention to the ever-changing traffic lanes and detours in the construction work zone. 
Law enforcement provides increased patrols in work zone areas. State figures for 2016 show 14 persons died, 1,243 were injured, and there were 3,183 cases of property damage in work zones crashes in Tennessee. Braking, following, and stopping distances. Drivers must know and understand the safe and proper braking procedures for vehicles. This includes the principles of allowing adequate following distances or safety cushion around your vehicle and the laws of required stops, signs, signals, railroad crossings, school buses, etc. It is important to read the owner's manual of your vehicle to learn the safe and proper operation of your brake system. By law, all automobiles must have two separate methods of applying brakes. Commonly, these are the vehicle's regular brake, foot brake, and a parking or emergency brake, sometimes referred to as a hand brake. In this section, we will focus on use of the regular vehicle brakes. For information on use of the parking brake, see the section on backing and parking that begins on page 64. 1. Braking You will encounter numerous driving situations, such as speed zone changes and merging traffic, that will require proper braking techniques. 1. You should apply your brakes slowly and evenly by applying gradual pressure. 2. Start braking early as a signal to the cars behind you. 3. If you brake too strongly or quickly, you could skid and lose control of your vehicle. 4. A sudden stop makes it harder for drivers behind you to stop without hitting your vehicle. Important. As a general rule for vehicles without anti-lock brakes, if the car starts to skid, take your foot off the brake and turn the steering wheel in the direction of the skid. This is recommended if you can do so without running off the road, hitting something, or steering into oncoming traffic. With a standard transmission, you can use the gear shift to slow down when approaching a stop sign or signal. First, flash the brake lights to signal any cars behind you, then shift down to a lower gear. Many of today's cars are equipped with four-wheel anti-lock brake systems, ABS. Read the instructions in your vehicle's owner manual to learn the safe and proper operation of ABS. A general overview of ABS braking procedures includes, when slowing or stopping, apply firm, steady pressure to the brake pedal. Never pump the pedal with ABS. Always brake and steer when using anti-lock brakes. With ABS, you brake and steer. Push the brake pedal while steering around hazards and keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal until the car comes to a stop. Do not take your foot off the pedal or pump the brakes because that will disengage the anti-lock system. If you are braking to avoid an emergency or crash, gradually steer the car around any obstacles. ABS was designed to prevent vehicles from locking wheels and to allow drivers to steer when skidding. Expect noise and vibration in the brake pedal when your ABS is in use. These sensations tell you ABS is working. Additional information on ABS begins on page 96 of this manual. Regardless of the type of brake system you have, always be prepared to brake unexpectedly. There are some instances when drivers should especially be alert, including when driving next to parked cars, when approaching any type of intersection, when approaching traffic signals and crosswalks, when driving in a school zone or residential area, when seeing brake lights of other cars, when driving in heavy, slow-moving traffic. Drivers should know the difference between covering the brake and riding the brake. In situations listed above, covering the brake means the driver's foot needs to hover over the brake or between the brake and gas pedals for quicker response time. Riding the brake is keeping your foot resting or slightly pressed down on the brake. This adds much wear and tear on the vehicle's brake system and also gives other drivers the false impression that a stop is imminent. Covering the brake is often smart and a safe driving practice. Riding the brake is not a safe practice. 2. Following distances. Obey speed limit laws and know the proper braking procedures that must be used for maintaining safe following distances between your car and other vehicles. Tennessee law states, the driver of a motor vehicle shall not follow another vehicle more closely than is reasonable and prudent, having due regard for the speed of such vehicles and the traffic upon and the condition of the highways. When another driver makes a mistake, you need time to react. Give yourself this time by keeping a space cushion around your vehicle. This space cushion will give you room to brake and avoid hazards when needed. 
Good drivers keep this safe following distance or space cushion to have a better view of the road. The more space you allow between your car and the car ahead, the more time you will have to see and react to traffic hazards or crashes down the road. Many drivers don't see as well as they should because they follow too closely, tailgating. The vehicle ahead of them blocks their view of traffic and road conditions. Rearing crashes are very common and most of these crashes are caused by drivers who are tailgating. The two second rule. To share the road safely, stay a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you. Nationally, safety agencies and driver education programs have tried to define a safe following distance for drivers to maintain. This has ranged from a two to four second following distance. Use the following tips to determine if you are following too closely. A. As the car ahead of you passes a stationary point on the road, a signpost, driveway, utility pole, etc., count the seconds it takes you to reach the same spot. In the illustration below, you are driving the red vehicle. B. Count to yourself. 1001, 1002, etc. You should not reach the same point on the road before you finish counting to at least 1002. If you do, you are following too closely. C. Slow down slightly to increase the space between you and the other vehicle. Find another spot to check your new following distance. Repeat this exercise until you are following no closer than 2 seconds. The principle will hold true at any speed on state and U.S. highways with moderate speed limits. However, during inclement weather, interstate highway driving at higher speeds and night driving, the 2 second rule should be increased to allow for improved visibility. A minimum of 4 seconds should allow for better reaction time and a safer space cushion under these conditions, including following a motorcycle. 3. Stopping distances. Be alert and know when you will have to stop well ahead of time. Stopping suddenly is dangerous and usually indicates that a driver was not paying attention, was speeding, or was not allowing a safe following distance. Try to avoid panic stops by seeing events well in advance. By slowing down or changing lanes, you may not have to stop at all, and if you do, it can be a more gradual and safer stop. As a rule, it is best to never stop on the road unless necessary for safety or to obey a law, stop sign, etc. There are three steps to stopping a vehicle. Perception time, the length of time it takes a driver to see and recognize a dangerous situation. Reaction time, the time from perception of danger to the start of braking. The average is two-thirds of a second as noted in blue section of chart on the next page. Braking time. This depends on the type and condition of vehicle brakes as well as vehicle speed. Stopping distance can vary widely due to many factors. Type and condition of the road pavement. Type and condition of vehicle tires and brakes. Vehicle design and condition of the shock absorbers. Vehicle weight and when loading or towing. It takes longer to stop than most people realize. Suppose you're driving on the interstate at night at the maximum limit of 70 miles per hour. A deer suddenly appears in your headlights. Will you be able to stop in time? It will take 1.16 seconds for you to see the deer and move your foot to the brake. Before you even start to brake, you will have traveled 128 feet. If you're on a good road in good weather, the braking distance at 70 miles per hour will be 290 feet. Your total stopping distance has now reached 418 feet nearly the length of one and a half football fields. The chart, top right, shows average stopping distances based on tests made by the Federal Highway Administration for vehicles under ideal conditions. Note, this chart does not include the distance you will travel in the half second of time required for perception of the hazard. According to the National Safety Council, a lightweight passenger car traveling at 50 miles per hour can stop in about 200 feet. The distance required to stop your vehicle is important in helping you choose a safe driving speed. These charts can be used as a rough guide, but your actual stopping distance will depend upon many factors specific to the situation you encounter. Stops required by law. Tennessee law states, every driver approaching a stop sign shall stop before entering the nearest side of a crosswalk or stop at a clearly marked stop line. If neither is present, then 1. Stop at a point nearest the intersecting tra roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway and 2. Stop before entering the actual intersection. 
Tennessee Code defines stop as complete cessation of movement. You are responsible for knowing the proper stopping procedures required by this law. As stop signs and right turn on red intersections come to a complete stop, not a rolling stop, and go only when traffic is clear, approaching traffic should not have to slow down or change lanes for your vehicle. You should come to a full and complete stop at the stop sign or traffic signal. Often a wide white stop line will be painted on the pavement in line with the sign. You must stop your vehicle behind this line. If no pavement markings are present, stop when the front of your vehicle is even with the stop sign's placement on the roadside. If you cannot see whether the intersection is clear of crossing traffic, edge up slowly until traffic is clearly visible from both directions. If the intersection where the stop sign traffic signal is placed has a crosswalk for pedestrians marked on the pavement, you must stop before the front of your vehicle reaches the nearest white line marking the border of the crosswalk. If there are pedestrians in the crosswalk or about to enter the crosswalk, you must wait for them to cross before proceeding. Once the crosswalk is clear, you may slowly edge forward to check the traffic before crossing the intersection or entering the roadway. When stopping behind another vehicle already stopped at the intersection, make sure you allow adequate gap space between the vehicles so you are not tailgating. A basic rule of thumb is that you should be able to see the license plate and or the other vehicle's back tire where it meets the pavement. This gap provides a safety zone in the event that the other vehicle rolls back slightly or stalls. If the vehicle stalls, you would still be able to maneuver around it safely. The gap provides a way out in the event of an emergency, such as another vehicle approaching from behind so fast that you may need to move to avoid a rear-end collision. Once the vehicle in front of you has moved on through the intersection, you may move forward to the stop line. Remember, you still must bring your vehicle to a full stop at the stop line. A complete stop is required at a flashing red traffic light, just as with a stop sign. After you have stopped, if there is no traffic from the right or left, you may proceed. When there is traffic on the crossroad, right to left, and or oncoming traffic heading toward you, from the other side of the intersection, you must follow the right-of-way procedures. Right-of-way rules are discussed in depth later in this chapter. You must stop completely when directed to stop by a flag person at a road construction site or by a police officer directing you to stop in any situation. Rolling stops. Rolling stops are dangerous and illegal. A rolling stop occurs when the driver only slows down for a stop sign or traffic signal and proceeds through the intersection or turn without bringing the vehicle to a full and complete stop. A complete stop is required by law. Most law enforcement officers and driver education instructors agree that a vehicle has not come to a complete stop until the driver feels the car lurch forward after all motion is ceased. Rolling stops are grounds for receiving a traffic ticket and for failing the driver's examination road test. The following are reasons to avoid rolling stops. A driver may not see a child or other pedestrian who may think the car will follow the law and come to a complete stop. There is a better chance of seeing possible hazards because the driver who comes to a full stop has a longer observation period at the intersection. If two drivers are traveling at right angles to one another and both fail to stop, a collision is almost a certainty. Police and insurance companies will hold the driver who fails to stop completely liable in the event of a crash, possibly resulting in fines, loss of license, increased insurance rates, or loss of insurance coverage. Stopping for railroad crossings. Railroad crossings have pavement markings that include a large crossback X, the letters RR, a no passing zone stripe, and a stop line. Railroad crossing collisions should not happen. When they do, it usually means drivers are not paying attention to signs, pavement markings, and other warnings that tell when a train is coming. Stop, look, listen, look again. Every motor vehicle should be driven at the rate of speed that will permit the vehicle to be stopped before reaching the nearest rail of a railroad crossing. The vehicle should not be driven over the crossing until all railroad tracks are completely clear of train traffic. Violations of railroad signals or signs carry the same penalties as violations of other traffic control devices. When you approach a railroad crossing and a train is coming, you must stop between 15 and 50 feet from the railroad tracks. 
Wait until the train is passed and it is safe to cross before proceeding across the tracks. The following are indications that a train is approaching an intersection. The crossing has a crossback sign with flashing lights to warn drivers when a train is approaching. The crossing has a crossing gate that is lowered, blocking access to the railroad tracks when a train is approaching. A human flagger signals drivers that a train is approaching. Trains are required to signal a horn when they are approximately 1,500 feet from passing through a railroad crossing. Never drive across a railroad crossing when any of the above indications of an approaching train are present. Trains move very quickly. Trying to beat a train is extremely dangerous for the vehicle driver as well as people on the train. Tennessee law requires certain vehicles to stop at all railroad grade highway crossings, whether or not any signs or signals are activated when the vehicle approaches the crossing. As a driver, you must be aware of this requirement so you will be prepared to meet or follow these vehicles when they have to stop at the crossing. The vehicles listed below are required by law to stop before crossing any railroad grade crossing. Church or school buses, regardless of whether such buses are carrying any passengers at the time of crossing. Common carriers, such as taxis or other vehicles transporting passengers for hire. Vehicles transporting flammables, explosives, or other dangerous articles as cargo or part of a cargo. Buses at a railroad crossing will pull to the right. The side movement of the vehicle, along with its stoplights, is a very clear signal, day or night, that a vehicle is preparing to stop. You must be alert to this type of movement by buses. Tanker trucks and other vehicles required to stop at all railroad tracks will usually signal such a stop by displaying emergency flashers of the vehicle to alert other drivers to the impending stop. The school bus stop law, meaning a school bus. Any driver meeting a school bus or church bus on which the red stop warning signal lights are flashing should reduce his speed and bring the vehicle to a complete stop while the bus stop signal arm is extended. The vehicle must remain stopped until the stop arm is pulled back and the bus resumes motion. Overtaking a school bus. Any driver approaching a school bus or church bus from the rear shall not pass the bus when red stop warning signal lights are flashing. The vehicle must come to a complete stop when the bus is stopped. The vehicle must remain stopped until the stop arm is pulled back and the bus resumes motion. School bus warning lights. It is illegal to pass a school bus that has stopped to load or unload students. Never pass on the right side of the bus as children enter or exit. This is illegal and can have tragic results. You must stop and remain stopped until the bus has started moving or the bus driver motions for you to proceed or the visual signals are no longer activated such as the red flashing lights go off and, on, and or the stop arm is pulled back. Yellow flashing. When the yellow lights on the front of the back of the bus are flashing, the bus is preparing to stop to load or unload children. Motors should slow down and prepare to stop their vehicles. A red flashing. When the red lights are flashing and the star arm is extended, this indicates that the bus has stopped and that children are now getting on or off the bus. Motorists must stop their cars and wait until the red flashing lights are turned off. The stop arm is withdrawn and the bus begins moving before they start driving again. When a school bus is stopped at an intersection to load and unload children, drivers from all directions are required to stop until the bus resumes motion, as shown by the red vehicle in the diagram at the right. It is a Class A misdemeanor, and the driver can be fined between $250 and $1,000 for not stopping for a stopped school bus. When driving on a highway with separate roadways for traffic in opposite directions, divided by median space or a barrier not suitable for vehicle vehicular traffic, the driver need not stop, but should proceed with caution. A turn lane in the middle of a four-lane highway is not considered a barrier, but a fifth lane that is suitable for vehicular traffic. Drivers meeting a stop school bus on this type of road would be required to stop in both directions.